So good evening, everybody. This is the Tuesday, May 28th meeting of the Conway Select Board. The agenda did, by the way, say Monday, May 28th. Um, oh. But Sorry. See, see, seeing as that was a state and federal holiday and all offices were closed and all business was closed. I, Only I we could be as perfect as you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Um, so. To, to me, that was a minor clerical error, not worthy of, uh, of, 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 of postponing the meeting. So um, I hope everybody else agrees. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this meeting is being recorded on Zoom. Um, and if for reason, any reason, well, if the Zoom doesn't work, then we're not, that, then the meeting's not, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, so um, I'll call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda. Um, since I'm not, I can either use the computer for a Zoom call or look at the agenda. Uh, um, so, uh, vote to approve the minutes of May yeah. 20th. Thank you. I did see those. Um, move to approve the minutes of May 20th. I saw those. I thought they were fine. Um, Chris, Agreed. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Um, um, you you yes. state your names just because it's on the Zoom. <laughs> Unanimous, Philip Cantor and Chris Waldo. Yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, since since um, uh, our esteemed colleague, the chair of the Forest and Trails Committee, Suzanne Artemis, is here, um, we're gonna uh, just move the item on the agenda for discussion and possible vote, which I don't think it will be on the Conway State Forest Road uh, situation. And um, this is really just Suzanne's chance to let the select board know what the issue is. Um, unless, I don't know, Veronique, whether you have anything to add about whether Ron or, uh, not Ron, whether Don Bates, the police chief, and Bob Baker, the fire chief, got back. because. No. When I saw Bob yesterday, he said he didn't. He, he was pretty doubtful whether they'd have a chance to get up there today. Um, but he, he was going to try. So, um, Suzanne, can you you know just just let let Chris know, let Ronique know, sort of what the issue is and what the concern is. You're muted, though. Thank you. Um, yeah. So there are several culverts, two in particular that are relatively close to the Maynard Cemetery on that kind of main road, um, which is a town road. And um, they're in really bad shape. Um, they're failing. And so they're being made worse by vehicles um, going in there vehicles like that don't belong to either Coles or the town. Um, so the Forest and Trails Committee um, is in the process of looking into two different sources of grants to try and get funds for replacing those culverts with bridges, um, which obviously is a long term project. And so we were hoping um, to, uh, assuming we apply for and get the grants, to close the road to outside vehicles um, using those expensive gates that, you know, have locks and that we would provide keys to the fire chief, the police chief, Coles, and DCR. Um, and we would, in our grant application, request funds to purchase the gates so that at least we're, we're mitigating additional damage, right? And, until we can get the long-term solution in place. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I just had a quick question. Is this before or after the cemetery that we're looking at? It's, well, it, assuming that you are coming in from Cricket Hill Road, it's, it's before, one is 
No, actually, one is right after and one is further down. Okay, good. Just because I know legally, and I've spoken with Ron about this, legally, we have to keep access open to the cemetery. So, but that works if it's, if it's afterwards, if it's past it. Well, that, that, that's where the culvert is, but the gate would be back on, I'm assuming, the gate would be at the entrance to the logging road. Because okay. there's actually, there is another culvert. Closer to the logging road that is failing. It, it would be helpful to have a map so we could see, but I know that from speaking with Ron that we legally have to keep access open to the cemetery. So that might be a concern. And, and why is that? Because it's a public cemetery. But but it's not it's not like anybody's being buried there. No, but I and, you know we can double check with town council. But that's our understanding is that legally we have to keep the road open to the cemetery. And then would would a gate with the key that's accessible at town hall satisfy that requirement? Is the other question? Yeah. So um, because that's right. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So. I mean, the, the I, and, you know, I, I also think I, I did see something in cemetery regs that you're supposed to like be able to get um, like a hearse into a cemetery or something like that. Um, none of our cemeteries, no, none of the eight town cemeteries can you get a vehicle in or a hearse. All of them require, I know this from recent personal experience, um, all, all of them require actually lifting um a casket or whatnot um, over a stone wall or through a narrow pedestrian gate. So I'm sorry, I'm looking at the map now. Where are we? Where are we talking about? Um, so putting up the gate. So I'm thinking. Well, there might there may need to be multiple gates, but I was thinking. Do you know on Cricket Hill Road where it takes a sharp left a, a sharp left hand turn and and yes. right there there's like a little off-road parking space yes. sort of and that's where um okay and then there's I, what only like three homes up that way beyond that um maybe maybe a little bit more because there's the charrettes there's the lee property there's one two three four four yeah I see four. Yeah, I think that's correct. And then the one at the very end is abandoned, of course. Yeah. Got it. So four total. Okay. Wait, you, you're, you're thinking about but, putting a gate on Cricket Hill Road? No, 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 no. Yeah. To the logging road that's off of Cricket Hill Road. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I, okay. I see where that logging road is. And it's a town road. I mean, I, I, it, it does have a name. I, I don't remember what it is, but it's not. Everybody... <laughs> Everybody calls it the logging road, but it is, it does have a name. Um, we'll have to consult the historical society. <laughs> yeah, there you go. yeah. Okay. And, and my understanding of where I, I know the one really wrecked culvert is sort of between the beaver dam and the cemetery. Sort of. Say that again, Phil, what, what's between the beaver dam and the cemetery? One really wrecked culvert. Like the, that was just sort of, you had to like, Hot, like leap it it was like a like a the, well, the, the ditch was so bad that you sort of had to leap it at, right right near where um where all the the diseased it, ash the, the stand of diseased ash was like right near there um i think i'm not that, i'm not or, sure yeah. which one you're talking about i know that right near the beaver pond the, the beavers had done some damage and it was flooded that, yeah the road was flooded out and um ned uh helped repair that with a beaver baffle and anyway yeah i mean so i mean you know we're well i i did i did ask the police chief and the fire chief to go you know the the, the because it is an issue of public safety and um you know that 
the it you know if it right now there's nothing that says you know four wheel drive vehicles only whatever it's and people do have like a history a family history of like going up there for you know, hunting or whatever and um um you know you don't you don't want people to have to like wreck their cars and the 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 one thing that I did see in there was the one time was like a lifted four wheel drive Jeep that was just like tearing the road up. And, yeah, um, there's somebody from Williamsburg that goes in there quite often is yeah. known to some people that is just doing incredible damage. So. So, you know, we'll 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 uh, consult with once they've had to take a look at it. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to just want, you know, thought, thought, right. I mean, this, the purpose of this is just so that you can introduce the topic to the select board and that right. just so that, so know that it's something, put it on the radar and let's deal with it when we have all of our ducks in a row. Okay. Yep. Sounds like a safety concern. So as long as town council says it's okay, given the cemetery, I don't see an issue with, Wait, what's board. town council? Uh, about uh, about whether there's a legal requirement for access. Oh, oh, that to, council. I keep missing yeah, yeah, yeah. council. Yeah, lawyer. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so, uh, you know, and whether a gate that with a key that can be handed to someone can satisfy that. Right. If, if there if there is a requirement, can the gate with a key satisfy that? Yeah, so yeah, because you, you guys are going to be talking right with like DCR and their attorney and your yeah, county DC, council. DCR was rather uh, uh, non committal um, and seemingly didn't care too much. You say that's an accurate characterization, Veronique? Well, well, it's a town road. So exactly. Yeah, exactly. That but was they, the, that was they need access, question. right? Um, yes, but I don't think they would have a problem if it we was, gave them a key. Yeah, I don't think that would be an issue for DCR. Okay, and hopefully I, Coles too, although I don't think Coles yeah. has any. I don't know, but we we could give Coles a key too. And and I think the gate. Sorry. No, I, I think the gate the the uh, the the the, the, the gates that seem to be built for this sort of thing are, um, you know, they're, they're examples of them are on Roaring Brook Road that the Deerfield Water Authority put up um, to keep four wheel drive vehicles, but pedestrians and bicyclists and single file horses can get by, um, et cetera. So, um, right, so that's sort of, but they're concrete footings and thick pipes with that appear to be filled with concrete um, and, but they swing open easily. I did have a key once, um, and they do swing open easily. They're kind of balanced when they built them. So, well, isn't there one um, right near the at, at the driveway to the ball field at the at the upper parking yes. lot? Yes, yes, yeah. Good point. I forgot about that one. So, all right. Well, thank you. Thanks thank for you. listening. Yeah. All righty. All righty. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Have a nice meeting. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, what's next, Bernie? Oh, um, discussion on the uh, community one-stop grant. Since okay. I found out that the grant match is not required, it was recommended by the FERCOG, but it's not required. So. Um, the amount that we would be asking for is still 866000 which is different than what we'd said. But given yeah. that um, given that this is a primary route in town and that we already tried to get help from the Emergency Watershed Protection Program and that, was, that didn't happen, uh, hopefully, and that we have the support of Rep. Blay and Senator Mark um actually that was a really nice letter that you wrote to them requesting that support um that was very well worded and proved to be effective in a prompt manner 
it did right. but depending yeah. on if um we change it i'm gonna have to ask them to revise so, it unfortunately um so yeah you know and i guess um you know for the re the the grant it, it, it the, the we we haven't really explained this on this in in this meeting and i, I suppose maybe we should it's for the uh, culverts on Shelburne Falls Road, um, where between Emerson Hollow, sort of right at the base of Emerson Hollow Road, um, and heading north towards Shelburne Falls. Uh, yep. the, the, so there's a couple of them, three of them, if you want to, uh, two or three, um, depending on how, whether you see the one thing is one or two. Um, but uh, the, the, um, and the river has, you know, wrecked the banks there like multiple times. Um, and um, the, the, it's anybody that's driven over there. Um, if you haven't slowed to like below 20 miles an hour, you instantly regretted it. <laughs> um, uh, and that's just the requirement of, you know, trying to, you know, keep traffic going while the culvert underneath the road is, needs to get repaired. Um, so the and, and the the grant for um, that we're talking about the eight hundred and sixty six thousand dollars. The discussion is whether or not there should be a match that isn't legally required, a twenty five percent match from the town. But the what we have been told and what is in the explanation and the grant instructions is that um i get it's not they don't even come out and say it but the implication is that if you do provide a grant it, what is it an indication of your sincerity of your uh well the the language actually says that given the competitive nature of the mass work grants basically i think they're upping the ante and that towns that are willing to provide a match are showing more um what would the word be? Um, Money. Investment in in the process. Um, but it does say that, and if you don't, then you might consider a pre-development grant, which really wouldn't make any sense in this case. Yeah. So, right. it, you know, given that it's an awful lot of money, it would be $216,500 to make a 25% match for an application that doesn't require it and for taking away money from the highway department that is still kind of hoping to basically make use of all of the state disaster funds. Um, you know, it just seemed it would be a good idea to revisit what the board wanted to do. Yeah. And I completely so, agree. <laughs> I, so, okay. Yeah. So we've successfully framed the issue. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so to, to me, the question is, what's the least expensive way to get this done for the town is the amount if we don't get the grant and we do it out of the state supplemental budget funding of 1.245 million which we're now down to 600 and something thousand right yeah 700 and something thousand i don't know what, what's the total that we have left um i i don't know because well, i haven't seen the numbers from ron so the last would be i'd say we use seven hundred thousand out of that so far probably yep. more um so if we rely entirely on that to do the project is that going to cost us more than the match well that's so the, the the problem is unfortunately that this grant is due very the application is due very soon. Understood. <clears throat> One of the things that we don't know yet is whether or not it needs to be done to the stream crossing standards. Ron has told me that the um the water that comes down from Emerson Hollow, the culvert that comes out into the river, unless the river is flooded. It doesn't, there's no way that um, wildlife could travel through the culvert because the culvert comes through Emerson Hollow and there's a drop off before it hits the river. You see what I mean? So no fish are going to be able to go through there the way it's currently designed. Well, so I, I've never so we, seen, I've never seen, I've seen frogs. I've never seen a fish in Emerson Hollow in the stream right there. 
Yeah. So and this is the thing that until a wetland specialist comes in and looks at it, we won't know whether or not it is deemed to be having to adhere to the um, stream crossing standards or whether we could replace it with the same culvert Ron did just upstream on the emergency basis. So still the question, which is the least expensive path that will, the, will it cost? Mm. And, and if we don't, if we don't know, then um, that's not the ideal level of knowledge with which to make the decision. Um, no, but so it's the an extra grant reason. is to put in a box culvert or a block culvert, so a big them, concrete. Yeah. yeah, two of yeah. them. So that's why it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I spoke to Ron, we have to give him full credit. He's the one who told us that there was no match needed. Um, but he was indicating he thinks he could do the work with the same culvert style, the circular culvert he used to replace the first one, and it would cost considerably less. Um, I'm a, of the mind that this is absolutely a necessity, and I would hope that we wouldn't be denied just because we're not flashing money at it, our own money at it. That's my take. So I think the yeah. cheapest way would be to get the grant without a match. And then if that doesn't work, then we could explore other avenues, you know. Okay. All right. Um yeah yeah that sounds like a plan then apply for the grant without the match and uh ask natalie and uh, paul to delete that last sentence of the third paragraph from their letter um yeah i redid the letter and sent it out to you guys again later because i included that we did try the usda grant and it didn't work so um so i'll sum it up I'll need to run around if you if you do vote this. I'll need to run around and get your signatures because I have to put it in on Friday. All right. Yep. And um, I'm also curious about the timeline. If they it, for the box culverts, it seems like that would be a very long wait. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. Because you have to cast those, right? It's it's they don't have them just made. You cast. Yeah, they for do. The size. No, they do have them made in all kinds okay. of sizes. They do. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's good to know. I mean, that makes it a little bit better, but I still feel like it would take a long time. But anyway, yeah. So my vote is to ask for the grant in one hundred percent full, without a match. All right. So that would be a motion from Chris. Yes, I make I'm, a motion. To you. <laughs> I I will second it. And uh, all in favor. All, all those in favor. Aye, Chris Waldo. I, Philip Cantor. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, um, you ready for the next agenda item? <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Okay. So it's um, vote to reappoint Sarah Newman to the Board of Registrars for a term ending March 31st, 2027. So moved. Here's where you sit. Second. All, all. <laughs> All, all, all in favor. Aye, Chris Waldo. Aye, Philip Cantor. Next. Um, discussion on select board members to address individual warrant articles at annual town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'll I've... do obviously all the capital. All right. Um, I'll also do the street lights. All right. Um, let's see what else and... we got here. Give Erica all the bad ones. <laughs> She's only going to be there for the first hour, I think. Just yeah, oh, that's right. right. So she'd have to take the earlier articles. Yeah. Um, I will also do the um, school articles. I mean, they basically are capital improvements anyway. Yeah. The school capital stuff. Sure. Yep. So that's about and, half. Yeah. And, and <laughs> act, act, yeah, actually, um, so the, the, with the school capital stuff, you know, D that Darius um, and, and Shelly are usually right on top of that. And just you'll get a sense from the room whether or not you think anything more is even necessary, um, right. usually, usually with them. Um, so um, 
you know, they're definitely, they're, we're really lucky to have them. And very often when we, you, you can just tell from the reaction in the room that like the, any more explanation from anyone else, it, it can't help. It's already going to pass like unanimously. So it can only hurt. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, but but that's so really, you, you know, too, I believe there's going to be a request to move the uh, community preservation committee article up to right after the school ones, because, um, oh, great. Sorry. <laughs> Um, because it involves the school officials and they wanted to allow them to leave and not have to wait through all of town meeting. Okay. You know, yeah, so I mean, that'll be that a request to the moderator. That, yeah, that, that's a motion to the moderator. Yep. So do, we don't have to change the article number though, right? We just no, move no. it up. It, it would be a request to the moderator and then, and then it would just be moved forward. Oh, okay, and, good. Because that'll down. confuse people if you change the numbers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Nope. All right. I mean, a lot of these are just really shouldn't even really need an explanation. It's just moving money from one bucket to another. Um. I think, you know, obviously Jan will probably talk about the pickleball court, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, you know, I'm, I obviously was not really for the bylaw change, so I don't think I should talk about that one. Um, yeah, the, the zoning board. Has has Jeff Jeff Lacey reached out to you to talk to you about he has. that? We've gone back and forth about four times. <laughs> All right. All right. He he's he's very persistent. He's very well written, very smart, nice guy. Yeah. He's yet to convince me. Um, are there any other articles you, you all have any concerns with that? I mean, I, I, I think we can assign them, um, if you wanted to go, go through them and just assign them very quickly, if you wanted, that way we can let Erica know if we assign her some of the earlier ones. Honestly, pick whichever ones you want to talk about and I'll, I, I, I'll just do whatever whatever's left over um i don't really uh you know I, my take on all this stuff is that it's always unpredictable the one the one that gets yeah. that gets in people's crawls you just you, you just at the end of the day you just shake your head and you're like i cannot believe that was the one but um well doesn't like, jimmy say when <clears throat> he reads off you read off the motion and then he asks if people have an explanation or want an explanation right so is that what you're talking about that you guys yes which ones you'll explain because sometimes it's people from the audience who you know whoever is involved with the article yeah. might be willing right to share yeah well. oftentimes oftentimes and and we hope you know we hope i mean i thought um the same like, like the, the the street light you know the um uh the chair of the sustainability committee did a really good job at pre-town meeting on that uh and i think um I was really surprised just to hear like her her argument been be greeted with applause like that's that was pretty cool um so i you know um yeah but beth i think will be there she's not the chair but she i think she's going to be at town okay. meeting. all right who's I the chair john meyer check all right sorry john you said today she was going to write a little yeah she's writing she's up something sure. for the um an explanation for town meeting I don't yeah, think so John's going to be at town meeting. I basically have articles. 
I can basically take articles four through 11. Well, well, actually four through 11 and then 13. 15 is the street lights, right? 15 is the street lights. Yep. All right. Yeah, so pretty much the first half. Okay. Sounds like a plan. So, um, what's next? Um, no, <laughs> no unanticipated, uh, no town administrator update, select board member comments and concerns. Um, what was the, what was the other mail piece? Historical commission. Historical commission. Yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you. I'm glad you reminded me of that. Uh, so, uh, in speaking with Veronique this morning, I think uh, a proposed plan to deal with this situation has arisen. Um, and that is to have town council, town clerk, town administrator, historical commission, and select board have a sit down and talk this stuff out. Um, and just, you know, um, and there may not be complete agreement on all I, I, aspects of the conversation, but um, there will be finality. So um, hopefully. So, um, so that's, that's, uh, that, that's the proposed plan. What do you think, Chris? I, so I think that works. I think it's a very good plan. My concern is that Last time the town council's involved an hourly, you know, yeah. pretty large hourly payment. And the last um the last meeting we had where it was a 15, what I thought could have been a 15 minute conversation lasted an hour and a half. So that's my only concern is that there there might need to be a moderator. <laughs> or yeah. at least a time uh, limit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A time limit yeah. for each person. Well, um, you know, whoever the next chair is, and um, I think re-election or not, I don't believe it's going to be me. The intent is to nominate the person who is in the th approaching the third year of the select board term. Um, no. <laughs> as I've been saying, like for over a year, I think uh, that that's the way it's always been done in Conway for 250 years. And I wanted to get back to that tradition. Um, and that if that it and I did look this up recently that the the way that it was done that if the person that was approaching their third year didn't want to do it they would nominate who they would nominate somebody else and that nomination would be treated as if it's that person's third like so it would be heavily weighted in favor of the other two saying yes so um so like that would be that would be my plan if reelected or it, obviously if I'm not reelected, then uh, it wouldn't, then it would be you anyway, probably. So um, I'm okay to moderate it. I, you know, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Just so just, but, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there that, that I do think that's needed and I'm okay taking the mantle for that. So um, none of the emails were directed to me. So I, I don't yeah. know if, since they went out to you all, if you want to inform the historical commission that that's the suggestion, it probably wouldn't be for a month or so. We need to find out Donna's schedule and the historical commission schedule and all of that. Um, see when everybody's available, but. And Lori. It, yeah, exactly. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, she's uh, going to be quite busy for the next month. Yeah. I, I, yeah did exactly. send her, I did send her an email asking whether she was okay with the plan. Um, and did not receive any response. I figured if she was not okay, I would have received a negative response. Um, but uh, she and I, she and I spoke about it, and she's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so that's so. I'll, I'll send out an email tomorrow or whatever, and uh, okay. we'll go from there. 
Yeah, but, it's, uh, if you could ask them just to include me in correspondence because they haven't included uh, me in uh, any of it. I, so. I most definitely will put that in my email. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, so that was, yeah. That's it, I guess. Um, what else? Well, it went select board member concerns, then mail announcements, next meeting, and adjourn. So that's so the next meeting is two. It has to be Tuesday, or or is Monday okay? It's Monday, June third. Right, and um, you know, my my thinking about the next meeting is that um, we're really better off doing the after town meeting report as soon after town meeting as possible and that um i was i was toying with the idea of not toying but contemplating the idea of inviting both of the other candidates for select board office to that meeting um just so that um for the benefit of their hearing it and because i i think that we get more out of it when memories are really fresh i really do um so I and and think that's a even, great idea. even right. even just like as far as I'm concerned, like a week or, you know, like two weeks or whatever, like the richness and the depth of what your recollections are really begins to fade. So, um, so I don't know. So, so that's my plan. That's my, that's my contemplation. Silence, Veronique, there's silence. Uh, <laughs> that That's fine. We'll have okay. to know by Thursday so we can, yeah. All right. because we have to All post right. it. All right. Okay. And, um, and obviously we'd have to run that by Jimmy. Yes. Make, yeah. make sure he's available, make sure he's available, but, um, yeah. Yeah. So that would be, uh, that would be, uh, so that's it then. So June, Monday, June 3rd. Yep. and um uh, uh yeah what else oh the announcement is uh the senior senior prom the month the evening of five to eight um um at the uh at the library so yep i know i know i'm going i'm told veronique you're going i will try i'm packing that night for vacation <laughs> yeah you're it, it'll it'll be over by eight um <laughs> yeah uh so and what else any other announcements town meeting 10 o'clock saturday the first um and yeah so that's about it okay so yep. mo motion to adjourn until town meeting at 10 a.m that is a select board meeting as well right mm. Well, you're all there, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it has yeah. to be. It has to be noticed as one. It always, it always is. I think. Yeah. I don't remember. I will second that motion. Two and uh, okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye, Chris Waldo. Aye, Philip Kinder. Thank you, everybody.